What meanings does water have for us humans? Even the Romans built water pipes to supply their settlements with water. Nowadays, too, clean and accessible water plays a major role in our health. Particularly with the emergence of large cities, modern water management became necessary and possible. Scientific discoveries, such as the discovery that we get sick from certain bacteria in water, and technological developments went hand in hand and led to modern ideas of physical hygiene. Water wheels and mills were an essential foundation for economic growth. Most importantly, technological advances have allowed water power to beat and replace horsepower and drive industrialization. Water power, therefore, results in social prosperity, but it often also results in the exploitation of nature and certain groups of people. For example, when indigenous people lose their land, animals lose their habitat, and ecosystems are destroyed. Water supply and water management vary by a great deal across the globe. This has to do with a geographic area, that is, whether an area is water rich or water poor. But it also has to do with the effects of climate change, which leads to the melting of glaciers, more frequent heavy rainfall, and flooding. River regulation has increased safety for humans and their settlements in the past, but that is no longer enough. We need more space for curved and branched river courses and intact ecosystems that can absorb the excess water. However, even within one country, there can be differences. Poor and disadvantaged neighbourhoods often have to live with poorly functioning drinking water supplies, sewer systems, and wastewater management. They also have fewer resources to protect themselves from flooding than wealthy neighbourhoods. Water features prominently in mythology, religion, and philosophy. There are many legends, fairy tales, and religious symbols connected with water and rivers. In the past, there were, and in some cultures still are, numerous places of worship in honor of river and water spirits. And even today, many art objects are created around the theme of water. However, water also has great importance as a commodity. The world's demand for water is increasing due to global population growth, urban growth, changes in dietary behavior, and lifestyles. Most water is consumed by agriculture, energy, and the production of consumer goods. Water that is used for the production of goods, such as tea, apples, eggs, t-shirts, and mobile phones, is called virtual water. But water is not only an object that can be bought in the form of bottled drinking water or other commodities. In other areas of life too, water is often treated like a consumer good. For example, in the leisure and tourism industry, whether it's swimming, sailing, surfing, fishing, or skiing, water and riverscapes are used as recreational spaces. Sometimes, so many visitors come to a riverscape that the ecosystem is damaged. There are good reasons why we change riverscapes, for example, by building dams to protect against floods, or building power plants to increase the energy supply for agriculture and industry. But there are also important reasons to preserve near natural river systems or to restore built-up rivers. Without near natural river systems and floodplains, the so-called ecosystem services we need to live our lives would not exist. But it is also about the protection of riverscapes as a habitat for animals and plants, not just for us humans. In order for life to flourish in a riverscape, we must consider all human and non-human interests because we are all interdependent. Indigenous cultures protect water like a living being that has a personality, feelings, and responsibility for all by sustaining and renewing life. All over the world. People seek out ways of protecting and revitalizing water and river communities. What can we do for our water and our river community?